terms of the April 16th, 1862, the Emancipation Act required any owner of slaves living in Washington, D.C. to document each of the enslaved persons, give their names, give a uh, physical description of each person, and give an estimated value of each person. This act established three commissioners to hear petitions from slave owners in the District of Columbia uh, applying for payment to, um, for their slaves. Congress paid slave owners to give up their slaves. That's morally questionable. They knew it, but they felt for this first emancipation, it had to be done. They actually hired a slave owner, a slave dealer from um, Baltimore, who came in and actually appraised the slaves. This particular record is the slave schedule for the Addison family. It gives some insight into the thoughts, the uh, motivations, the fears of some of the enslaved, formerly enslaved African American community at this time. They left the city on the 13th of April last, three days before the approval of the said act, because they feared they would be colonized in Africa. They are the descendants of Africans, but at this time they're several generations removed from Africa, because, so from their perspective, they're not going back anywhere, they're Americans. They went to Montgomery County, Maryland, where they remained until the 28th of September last, when they returned here and claimed their freedom under the above cited act. Some slave owners did not apply for compensation. They did not want to free their slaves. So in July of 1862, at Lincoln's urging, Congress passed a supplemental act that allowed slaves to petition for their own freedom. There were 161 petitions submitted after the July 12th uh, Supplemental Act. Most of these 161 petitions were submitted by individuals who had been enslaved themselves. This record is interesting in that this particular enslaved person, Philip Meredith, claims to be the slave of General Robert E. Lee. The commissioners who were hearing the petitions uh, worked extremely fast. They, they were in existence from April of 1862 to uh, January 1863. At the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, we are transcribing the records so they will be fully searchable. This particular document here is the actual petition that was filled out and signed and presented by Clark Mills, who actually worked on the Statue of Freedom that you see today on top of the uh, U.S. Capitol. His slave, Philip Reed, was the person who actually succeeded in molding that particular statue. Our digital site is called Civil War Washington. It examines the history of slavery, race, and emancipation during the war. We can see that Clark Mills highly valued Philip Reed and his skills. Like many of the enslaved persons at that time, I assume that his hope was that at some point he would know the reality of being free.